Good morning, uh, everybody, and very welcome to today's session about uh, Poppy and Poppy Check. I'm Gabriel Malarba, uh, Management Executive at First Digital, a first technology company. We are very excited to host today's event to talk to you about this elephant that somehow slowly found its way into the room over the last few years, which is South Africa's Protection of Personal Information Act, which becomes an enforceable law from midnight to night. Before we start, a little bit of housekeeping. Today's session will be recorded and the recording will be made available on our Tech Summit website. We'll share details with you guys after the event, so feel free to refer colleagues to it who missed today's session. This event is hosted in Microsoft Teams live meeting. So for those of you unfamiliar with Teams, welcome. You've obviously mastered the first step, which was to successfully join this meeting. Due to the size of the audience today, Everybody will be muted, and we ask that you post any questions in the chat window. You will find access to the chat window by looking at the, for the, um, the little chat button in the top right-hand corner <coughs> of your Teams client. We'll cover those questions um, at the end of the session for time that we specifically allocated to, to cover any questions. It's also unlikely that we might get to all um, the questions asked in today's session, but we will share everybody's contact details at the end of the session for you to reach out to us directly with any questions that you might have that we haven't covered in today's session. So today's session is not a reading of the law. Your responsibility of taking good care of personal information about employees, clients, suppliers, and other individuals that you deal with is as important to them as your own personal expectation that your own bank, your own cell phone company, and even your local municipality is taking good care of your personal information. So the objective of the law is simple. Take proper care of the personal information you have. Obviously, it goes into great detail about what constitutes personal information and the detail that you have to follow in looking after it. Errol will explain this during his presentation. We therefore start today's session by explaining the legislation in practical terms. And then we follow on to a demonstration by Gary of our product Poppy Check, which unlike any other product out there, gives you a very easy practical means of assessing the risk in your business and then being presented with a concrete list of actions that you've got to take to become compliant with the legislation. It's not a silver bullet and it won't make you compliant. But what it will tell you is what you need to do next. So it's my honor to introduce our two speakers for today. Errol Minow is the Managing Director of Kintan Latuli Associates. Errol has worked in the risk and compliance field for many decades, and he has been responsible for the risk and compliance strategies for some of the biggest events hosted in South Africa. Gary Finberg is the Product Manager for PoppyCheck, our compliance assessment tool that we developed in conjunction with GLA. And then lastly, in the background, Stephanie Brainard is our marketing coordinator who's controlling the cogs of this event in the background. If you have any issues during the event, please send her a message in the chat window and she will attempt to assist you. So before I hand over to Errol, a quick audience poll um, that will appear in your Teams client now. So take a minute to, to read the question um, and, 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 and select your answer. One of the main requirements of Poppy is that you make somebody responsible for Poppy. As Errol will explain, this requirement has been delayed until the end of the year. Nonetheless, it's one of the core requirements of the legislation, and it is required for businesses to follow this requirement. Great. Thanks for your answers. We'll discuss this um, during Gary's session or during the question and answer session towards the end of today's session. So without further ado, Errol, over to you. Please explain to our audience what Papaya is all about. Do we have Errol online? Gabriel, I'm not hearing Errol. Sorry, guys. I'm just going to see if we can get Errol back online again. Okay, Gary, uh, so this what we do. Um, just to continue with today's session, maybe we must swap the two sessions around. So. Um, uh, 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 why don't you uh, start with the demonstration of Poppy Check, our tool, and then uh, once we get it all back online again, we'll have him cover the, the detail of the legislation with us. Sure. 
Okay, just before I start, um, can everyone see my screen? I'm sharing the Poppy Check application and can everyone hear me? Yes, Gary. Okay, great. Hey guys, um, thanks everyone for joining this morning, uh, making the time. What we're going to do is we, um, we, we're we going to swap the presentations around. So I'll walk you through our Poppy Check application. And then once we're done, um, Errol will talk you through um, the legals around um, the Poppy Act. So what we're looking at, <coughs> pardon me, what we're looking at here is our Poppy Check Pro application. Um, <coughs> key to note, it's a SaaS application. So no hardware, no software, no licensing uh, necessarily required, just um, internet access, um, so a bandwidth in a browser. And <coughs> to, to kind of kick off the, the concept, you know, the, the idea behind the app was really to simplify the challenge that everyone's facing at the moment, which is that Poppy seems very vague. It's, it's a legal act. Um, there's no real guidance around where to start, um, you know, how to action it and, and how to kind of end it off. So what we've done is we've, we've tried to simplify that process and we've built this app that is extremely simple to use, um, simple to get up and running with. And literally after you've signed in, you, you can, you know, get started with your first assessment, you know, within the first 10 minutes. So just to, to kind of look at the context, the, the idea behind the usage of the app is that you're going to pop this up on a, a screen in your boardroom um, with the stakeholders around the table and, you know, have a facilitator kind of um, walking them through the application. So to kind of kickstart that and get everyone aligned, because typically everyone walking into that room is, is going to have a different perception of um, what Poppy is, what the act is, what you're responsible for and not. So at the very starting point, we, we include a kind of introduction to Poppy Act. It's a simple kind of one page read really just to give an introduction, get everyone aligned, get everyone on the same page and get them kind of to understand what they're responsible for, what, what they're not responsible for. And so when you start your first assessment, um, everyone in the room is aligned with, with what needs to happen. Also just note the infographic. The purpose there is to, to illustrate how simple the app is. It's, it's, it's basically six steps, you know, so you get started um, setting up some users setting up regions, business units, clients, um, setting up a number of backend elements that, that are effectively going to be used as containers to group your assessments. And the app fundamentally works off assessments. So the idea is that you get started right away and create your first assessment. Each assessment operates in a couple of key areas, which we'll look at in a, in a moment. Each area has a set of questions. Each set of questions has some very simple answers. Once you make your answers, you you save your, your state and the application based on the weighting um, behind the answers presents a set of corrective actions to you. Um, in certain cases where those corrective actions have a specific poppy template policy document associated, um, we provide a link in a, so with that corrective action to allow you to immediately open up that document and kind of capture the, the controls or the remediations that you've, you've implemented. Um, at any point, you can view a report, um, print one out and share it with your team. And the idea is that you, it's an iterative process. You know, it's a puppy is not a, a sort of a once off session. You know, you typically can be answering a set of questions out of that generate some um, remediation steps or corrective actions you know allocate those to stakeholders they're going to go off and uh, implement controls um, remediate gaps and then you're going to reconvene a couple of weeks later and then update your your answers and therefore refine your corrective actions so it's like an iterative process of action rebaselining and review so then just moving over to um, the tools in the application, as I mentioned before, it, it funda fundamentally works off assessments. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a, a quick assessment first, just to get you, you guys up and running so you can see what we're referring to. And then I'll speak to the kind of menu items and, and the extra functionality in the application. So to create a, a new assessment, really simple. Just click uh, kind of create new assessment and we'll just call this um, 
Puppy, puppy webinar. You can choose a business unit. Um, you can, you know, if, if you are working with clients on this, you can select a client. Um, if you, if your business is regionally distributed um, and you've put, like allocated this, for example, to the Western Cape, you can select that region and click create and let you know that your new assessment's been created. And then <clears throat> you can see over here, I've got a, a, a menu option called my assessments. So I'll click on that and it shows the assessments that are currently active. So there are currently four assessments active and the new one you can see at the bottom of the list has been created. Note that the app is kind of role based. So, for example, I can only see the um, assessments I've created. Gabriel's created assessments, I won't see those. Um, that being said, there is an all assessments node. So for a, com a central compliance officer um, or an admin user, they're able to see all the assessments. So just to kick it off, you can see each of these tiles represents an active assessment. So I'll scroll down, you can see, you know, in our case, and I'll speak to this use case in, in a couple of minutes, um, the scenario is that for, for the first digital group, we operate in Kharteng, KZN and Western Capes in three different regions. And our head office um, compliance manager has um, delegated assessments to each regional office. So there's an assessment being run in, in the Kharteng office, in the KZN office, in Western Cape, Cape office. And I'll speak to, to that in a sec, but just getting into the first actual assessment. So here you can see the Poppy webinar um, assessment of setup. It's, it's kind of at zero. Obviously, we, we've not answered any questions yet. You can see some of the, the metadata we captured. Um, the, you know, there's a date stamp on it. And you have some options. Um, you could view reports. You can view some supporting resources. You're able to view your corrective actions or you can edit um, the metadata of this particular project or delete it. To activate the assessment, simply click on the tile and that opens up this specific assessment in the main window. And just I'll just walk you through the interface. The idea is that this is, is very simple in very broad strokes and, and, and the whole aim behind the application is that you don't get bogged down in, in sort of lengthy subjective debates over things that are actually quite binary in a sense. You know, they're questions um, that get asked and then there's a pretty simple response. It's actually like yes, no, or I don't know. So just looking at the, the default state of this dashboard, um, there are some general actions that are recommended. So obviously these are, you know, according to this specific assessment that has not been started. Obviously, you know, this unit is not ready for puppy, needs to take substantial corrective action, etc. And then there's a list of, of high level recommendations. You'll notice that at the moment there are no specific corrective actions. And then if we move down, you can see the four primary areas that, that the, the questions are grouped into. So it's life cycle and process, security, people, and policy and strategy. But what you'll also what we'll also show you in a sec is that we also use the specific conditions of the act. So the, the eight key conditions of the act, which is essentially the, the bottom line is, is how compliant is your business in terms of um, the, the data that it's work, personal data that it's working with, how compliant are you against these eight specific conditions? So we'll look at that, we'll drill down to that once we've added some data. So in the interest of time, because we, we don't have a lot of time, I mean, and also to note, you don't need to do these sequentially. So for example, let's just as a case, start with, with people. So it gives you a little bit of heads up information to get started. You can see we're at zero and to get started with this specific section, I just click on view checklist. And that takes me into my questions in quotes for the people component. And you'll see here that the groupings of questions. So for example, in, in my people space, I've got questions that pertain to condi condition one accountability and condition seven security safeguards. And just as a, a, a kind of case in point for, for the process, um, let's say you answer the, the first question you're going to get typically um, in any puppy engagement is, um, has an information officer been appointed? So let's say I say no, right? And 
you, you know, maybe I also say no to this because I also don't have uh, that appointed. And let's say at that point, um, we want to go and see what our corrective actions are. So I save, save the state. And you'll see now that the app has started to operate. So it, it's it's presented some corrective actions based on the specific questions that are answered. So the first question is, or the first corrective action is information officer to be, to be appointed and registered at the information regulator. And then it points to a specific section in the act that's relevant to this. And I note that we, we provide, in the context of that corrective action, we provide us a specific copy compliant policy appointment letter for you to complete. So to kind of action that specific um, corrective action, just simply click uh, download this um, template. Now, just to note that um, in our Poppy Check Pro, we, we ship the app with about 70 sort of fully um, Poppy compliant um, templates covering the whole space. I'll, I'll speak to that in, in a second. Um, so you just simply open this document and you can see it's it's the letter to um, appoint an information officer. It, it gives you your legal reference sort of in the government gazette. So these are all fully aligned with Poppy. It's not just a random appointment letter. And there is some, some imp there's an implementation guide. There's some general how to's around the specific document and then just browsing down, you can see this is fully poppy aligned document. It's, it's not just a random letter. And, th and that's the same. The case is the same for all 70 templates that we ship with the app. So at the at that, you would you would go through the process of um, completing this document. You don't need to fit, complete it in one go, but you, you, you might do that or you might be partially complete. And then the second step in that process is you would want to save that back into the system as evidence. So basically, once we've once we've completed that document, we come down to another section in the app called file management, click on the upload evidence node, and you will see that um, You will see that this this letter sort of exists here now. The deputy information, I mean, sorry, the information officer appointment letter. So I'm going to come back to this the screen in a sec. So the the basic idea is fill out your questions. I mean, fill out your answers, generate your corrective actions. I'm going to go back to those, and I'm going to go back to a, a, a project that's more complete, just to gen to show you the the full range of corrective actions. So you'll see at the top level, you get your priority corrective actions, but on clicking show all, you get a full set. So for example, around, you know, in, in this particular assessment, we've we've answered questions around security. So these are the, um, the corrective actions we get. For example, here around sort of information security, you can see there's use of IT resources, antivirus and malware, physical security. So you can see these are all the policy documents you need to fill in. And typically what our or clients and, and, you know, people taking on the poppy journey are, are struggling with is, you know, where do we find all these documents? You either got to go to engage with the expensive kind of um, law firm to, to kind of get them or potentially a, a, a compliance specialist. And again, it's, it's, you know, it's going to cost a lot. So this way we kind of taking that, that whole journey with you guys, you know, we, we make making it easy for you to get started with, with your puppy journey, rapidly get involved in your assessments. The, the questions are all industry standard, um, all being developed in conjunction with um, two partners. One is a, a law firm that are puppy specialists, and the other is um, Errol's company, and Errol will be speaking to you shortly, that are um, top specialists in, in various compliance um, standards. So the, the all the content is kind of fully industry aligned, and you can see, in effect, the set of correct corrective actions is actually your work plan for your next step. So from a security perspective, you could assign these to the security team to go and um, remediate and correct and complete all these documents. And then you'll see down here, uh, this can go to HR um, and this could go to your compliance officer. So this is basically your plan of action with instructions 
and with documents to complete. So just going back in, and obviously sort of for this process, we, we would carry on, you know, we'd go to a, a different section, we might go to life cycle and process, and, you know, just start answering questions. And the idea is specifically to make this very simple. So, you, you know, and the idea is to get it done. So for example, does the organization obtain consent from a data subject prior to processing personal information? We, we give you a, a kind of a tool tip which kind of gives a little bit of extra information around that specific question to help you answer it. And then the answers are really just yes, no, or don't know. Because you know, if you think about it, you could discuss it for days, but ultimately it's like, does the organization obtain consent currently? Yes, no, don't know. And our, our kind of, the whole principle is based on weighting of, of these answers behind the scenes. So it kind of, it, it calculates your corrective actions based on that. And you would simply, the idea in completing the assessment is just simply going through these. As I said before, you don't need, you don't need, com, don't need to complete the entire assessment in one sitting. You know, typically you might have, um, you might run out of time or you might realize you've got a lot on your plate from what you've discovered and you want to assign that first. So at any point you can, you can just simply save this, the state of, of where you are and everything is, everything is generated in real time. You get your reports, corrective actions, everything just, um, is sort of dynamically generated. So that's what you would do for this particular assessment. You would you would carry on working through these checklists. And obviously the ultimate goal is that at the end, you know, once you've answered everything that pertains to you to green, you're going to get no more assessment, uh, no more corrective action. So you're pretty close to your compliance at that point, assuming you've implemented the controls that are recommended and you've completed the documents. Now, just from a, a use case perspective, I just want to point out that th there's there's the ability to kind of drill down to to a root cause. So, because typically, you know, say in our use case here, where we've got our central office in in Midrand, and they've delegated um, our, our <clears throat> first digital assessments to to our compliance office in Gauteng, um, someone in KZN, and someone in in Western Cape. Now they look at the top level dashboard. So these, all of these assessments work on a rolled up model so that we, we can get a top level aggregate view of all the assessments that are active. So that central compliance officer might come and look at the progress for the group overall. See, okay, we, we're at 37%. Um, you know, life cycle and process is, is not doing too bad. Security is not too bad, but what's happening with people? You, know, you can see this is pretty low at 19%. So now I'll, I'll look at my component assessments and see, okay, well, look, you know, um, Gauteng is performing pretty well at 75%. So let's let's leave them for now. Um, uh, KZN is at 45%, um, but Western Cape is at 25%. So let's drill into Western Cape, you know, and see what's going on there. So they would kind of obviously have, have access to all the assessments. They'd come in and look here and see, okay, that, that tracks. You know, you know, these sections are doing quite well, but people, they've answered nothing, you know. So they could then come and view the checklist and kind of see, OK, well, what are the issues here? You know, and maybe reach out to, to the team that's responsible and find out what the bottlenecks are or if there are any showstoppers and, and kind of get the ball rolling in, in that area. So there's that sort of lightweight kind of ability to drill down to a root cause. Now, so, something else to drill down at a, at a, a deeper level, um, you'll note at the top right of all of these areas is this toggle button. So if I want to see at a, at a deeper level what's going on with life cycle and process, I can click on that and that drills me into the actual conditions. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it'll show me how, how am I tracking, you know, against the conditions as they pertain to life cycle and process. You can see, okay, process limit limitation is sorted. We, we, we covered on that condition. Um, let's go and look at sort of openness, which is the, the weakest. So now I can actually drill through from this gauge, and that takes me through to the questions for that specific measure. So I can come in and see, okay, we, we you know, there, there are a bunch of questions that are still not answered, and let's go and look at those and, and sort of figure out what the, the, the bottlenecks or, or showstoppers are. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that's 
sort of just a, a, a sample of a use case, you know, where you can use the tool besides using it to actually um, move towards your compliance and get your, your documentation in order. If you if you're operating, say you divide it up regionally, you're able to now drill down and kind of um, see what's going on with the process. If this was say you were using divisions or departments or business units, you would again be able to kind of under, drill in and understand where the, the bottlenecks are. Couple more points just to, to note. You at any given point you can view a report. So this is a report for the specific Gauteng um, assessment instance. And you'll see it gives kind of all of the information that we've captured. It, it carries with it the links, live links to the documents, um, reporting on everything, corrective actions and such. So you can basically um, you can take this, you can um, either view it in the session or you can download it as a PDF. And you know the, the whole thing's available as a, as a PDF, which you can kind of share with, with your team. A um, <clears throat> couple more things to mention, you know, just in the interest of time, I'm going to move quite quickly through these last two points. We, we're making the assumption that, you know, you, you don't have a lawyer present necessarily in the boardroom with you, and you don't necessarily have a, a poppy specialist with you. The, the, the act is, is quite, it's got a lot of legal jargon in it. It's a, it's a legal document. And th there are a lot of questions that go along with this. So what we've done is we've, we brought into the app in, again in conjunction, and this is coming from our, our legal and and um, uh, puppy specialist partners. These are all the questions that they get asked one on one. You know, when they're doing a a, a face to face uh, puppy consult. So we've got a huge list of frequently asked questions with legal answers. So typically, when this stuff comes up in in your internal session, you don't need to reach out. You don't need to get a hold of a lawyer. You don't need to Google it. All these answers are there for you, and and they're real world answers, and and there lots of there lots of them. So it's it's almost like kind of bringing a consultant into the boardroom with you. Same with the glossary of terms. There are a lot of legal, a lot of legalese definitions and terms. So from from a puppy perspective, if if somewhere it mentions binding corporate rules, you've got a, an exact definition of that. You don't need to br break your focus to go and figure out what that is. We've also included. A lot of the legislation and um, policy amendments, gazetted documentation around the Poppy Act has been around for a while. So a lot of documentation has accrued over time. We bundle that all with the app, so you've got it all with you for reference. You don't need to search for it when it's referenced. And then one of the key aspects, I'm going to go over to the file management tab. One of the key aspects of the Pro app is we ship all of these templates for you. So if you just look through these different areas, you can see all of the, and these are all um, as detailed as the first one I showed you. They've all got instructions. Um, they've all got th their their references and alignments to the act. And it covers all, all the key areas. You can see here are the letters of appointment I showed you, um, responsible party, privacy policies, um, all the information security policies. There's some cross border documents. And then we've got, you know, some things like um, some spreadsheet workbooks, like a gap analysis. We've got questionnaires. Um, there's so much supporting information, you know, to assist you with the process. So, for example, the the SEC 51 manual. Um, so, not to labour that point, but a lot of these documents, or all of this, these 70 documents, are there for you with a pro version. And we're obviously adding. So, if any new um, templates become relevant. We, we'll add them to the app. And then <clears throat> the last step in the process is that as you complete documents, as you work through your um, corrective actions and you complete your, your documentation, they all get uploaded back to our secure storage in Azure in a, in a lockdown encrypted container for your organization. So in the case of this say this is a first digital um, kind of assessment so far we've these are the documents we've updated some security documents um, some impact assessment documents um, like, like requests and rights of data so we've we've started on our journey we've probably got about 10 documents that we've either completed or partially completed that are s stored in in the secure space so now at any given point 
you can actually come over to the compliance manual block and you can generate a compliance manual. So the idea is that when you when you click this button, what it's going to do is it goes off to your storage. It looks for all the all these documents that you've added and it merges them all into a PDF with a cover page with your company name, it's et cetera, and your compliance office and whatever, and lets you download it as a PDF. So that you, if the regulator um, you know comes knocking, you, you're able to demonstrate at least your, your current status. You don't need to go and find all these documents and assemble them. It's all in a coherent, organized uh, manual for you. And um, you can also put that on your website or you can share that with your staff because they also need to get aligned with, with what your, your puppy requirements are. So just to look at what that looks like, um, you would click on that and this is what you get. You get this dynamically generated for you, <clears throat> pardon me, puppy of uh, protection of personal information, puppy compliance manual. It inserts your company name, your logo, um, some metadata that you've captured, like your compliance office and contact details. And then it gives you like a rough um, index of, of all the documents that are included. And then uh, here are all the documents that we've, that you've so far like kind of added. So you can see, I'll just scroll down the left here. Um, there, there are all the documents. So it's literally, um, it's creating a, we, we're stacking all the documents and you've got them for reference. So that's kind of the, the kind of end point of the, the, the journey within the app. Something else to note, because it's a SaaS application, we also are able to push information out to our users. So we have a, a kind of notification section over here. If, if there's new information pending, there's a little red icon that will pop up there and you can click to view all notifications. So what we do is, for example, you probably recognize these from recent like press releases, but you know, there's there's the, the article around puppy rules have been updated ahead of July. Um, here's the prior authorization sort of date reset. And then other sort of useful tips and tricks and information we, we're going to be presenting to you all the time. So as a user of the app, we're trying to make it as simple as possible for you. You don't need to go and find all this information. We, we've got a team of people on it. They, they, they're tracking all activity around Poppy and we, we everything will get published directly into the app for you. When you log in, you just need to look for that um, this little red icon, click there, and then you're good to go. You'll, you'll be up to date with what's happening. So from my perspective, that's that's a quick run through the app. Um, you know, obviously in the interest of time, we, we can't cover every single detailed aspect of it, but hopefully that gives an idea of, um, you know, what we're trying to deliver with this tool. Great, Gary, thank you. That was excellent. Um, inevitably, there will be some questions for Gary, so please feel free to use the chat uh, function in the in the Teams window. Um, again, just as a reminder, it's there in the top right-hand side of the client, a, a little speech bubble icon. Click on that, it'll open up the chat window, and feel free to, to post any questions that you might have for Gary in there, and he'll cover them at the end. You know, normally, uh, um, pre-pandemic, when we hosted these events in a boardroom, it was easy to gather all the presenters and lock the door just to make sure none of them actually uh, uh, make a run for it. Unfortunately, online, uh, you know, we, we sometimes hampered by some internet issues. So I want to welcome Errol back. Errol, you missed your grand introduction, but uh, thanks Sorry, for joining Gary. us again. Uh, Errol has had some uh, fiber issues, um, which is fortunately sorted out. So I'm going to, without further ado, hand over to Errol, who's just going to talk you through really the, 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 the basics, the practical um, uh, aspects of the legislation. Um, Errol, uh, please take it away. Fine, thank you, thank you. Um, could we just go to the first slide? Okay, so <clears throat> I don't want this to, to become a classroom lecture. So there's about 15 slides. We'll, we'll whip through them as fast as possible. Uh, as Gabriel had said earlier, if you have questions, please uh, make a note of, of, of what they are. Uh, so what is Poppy? Well, it's an act of parliament. It's a, it's a statutory act. Poppy becomes South African law from the 1st of July. Uh, it, it, it is enacted, in fact, in two days' time. 
uh, one of the frequently asked questions is, uh, if if I've started my poppy compliance, will that be okay, even if I haven't completed it? You know, I'm, I'm not the information regulator, uh, but having worked with compliance matters like Act 85, health and safety, and so on, what I do know is that you can't half comply with something. You either comply or you don't. It's either daytime or it's nighttime. You cannot live in a in a twilight world. Uh, understanding academically the rules of the road is not the same as passing your driving test. There's no such thing as half a driver's license. So the same uh, will be with Poppy. You either have a system, you have a framework, you comply, or in reality, you don't comply. Okay, moving on. Uh, next slide, please. So who does the act apply to? Let's go back to who does the act apply to? Right. In terms of poppy, we have a responsible party, and that would be either an individual or it could also be an organization. It, 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 the definition is public and private bodies who process information. And then we have data subject. That's any person uh, or organization whose information is processed. Next slide. What is personal data? What does it mean? It means information relating to an identifiable, living, natural person and where it is applicable and identify, uh, identifiable existing juristic person. In other words, your company, your organization. What is referred to in the act and, and what is personal information could be about race, gender, sex, pregnancy status, marital status, uh, national, ethnic or social origin, color, sexual orientation, age, and so on. Your religion, language, your email address, physical address, your education, all of that forms part of what is, is your personal information, including your opinions of a person or about another person. And obviously implicitly or explicitly private correspondence. What does processing mean? Processing means any operation or activity or any set of operations, whether or not by automatic means, concerning personal information. So to simplify it, uh, what Poppy is really about, it's about three steps. Number one, it, the questions we ask is, are we collecting or are we receiving information? The next question is, how are we storing it and is it secure? And then the third question would be, who are we sending that information to, if anyone? Um, and that obviously are many, many steps and compliance issues in between those three steps, but that is the main thrust of what Poppy is all about. So, and it's, it's, it's also about merging or linking of information. Uh, the world is moving in a direction where everybody is starting to become anti-artificial intelligence. And Poppy deals with this as well in terms of software that makes automated decisions about us and, and our lives. What is processing? A pro processing means any person uh, could you go back one slide, please? Uh, it means any operation, activity, or set of operations, including the collection, the receipt, the organization, the collation, the dissemination, which is most important, um, and then the merging, linking, as I was saying earlier, which includes AI. Okay, next. Okay, an operator. So, People ask me to give examples of who's an operator. An operator is really anybody or any organization that we give personal information to. So in my particular organization, I outsource our payroll. So that means I have to take my staff and the, the personal information and I give it to the accounting firm that actually handles my payroll. So two things have to happen when I do that. Number one, 
and, and Poppy is very explicit. I need an agreement in place with my accounting uh, organization that is handling my payroll. They have to undertake to look after that information uh, on the same basis that I look after my employees' information. But moreover and more importantly, I need my employees' permission. I need their consent to actually give their information to any third party. Uh, this often happens sometimes where there are company motor vehicles and we, we perhaps as an organization don't own the vehicle, uh, but we're going we're gonna to hire them in from, from another third party company. And that third party company wants to know who's driving the car, where's the car parked. Again, uh, we're giving our employee information away to a third party, so we need an operator agreement with that third party. Next slide. Um, what is a processor? And what does that mean? Well, that's the person doing the processing. That's the person whose fingers are on the keyboard. Uh, they referred to as a processor. There are eight privacy conditions with which we have to comply. There they are. You can read through them quickly. Accountability right on top. This is very, very similar to, to GDPR. Perhaps in some, in some sense, it's, it's even more specific than GDPR. Um, there's a big emphasis on, on the, the data subject participation. In other words, uh, the, the obtaining or the gaining of the consent from the data subject is very, very important in, in Poppy. We cannot just get someone's information, store it, and then, and then use it for some other purpose, uh, pay without the consent of that data subject, or the data subject not knowing what it is we're going to be doing with the information that we've collected. So when we start to collect information, we, we really need to, to examine whether or not we have a, a legitimate interest in that uh, information. So an evaluation should be done. Uh, we actually have uh, within the, the, the Poppy Check program uh, forms to assist with this process where the right questions are asked to help you with that legitimate interest evaluation. Next. So there are other applicable sections. I'm not going to go into them in detail, but the act affects how you go about your direct marketing, uh, what happens with transborder information. So that's an individual's personal information may only be sent beyond the borders of South Africa if its purpose is to fulfill a contract between the individual and the organization. As an example, a travel agent may need to send your information uh, to a hotel in Europe uh, in order to, to, to confirm your, your booking on your next holiday. Uh, I'm assuming this, <coughs> this will be post-COVID. But so now there is a, a contractual obligation because without your information being sent uh, to the hotel, uh, you're not going to get your, your, your hotel booking. Then there are third-party contracts, which, which are also discussed in, in, in some detail. Um, and this has to do with uh, the transferring of information to an agent of an organization. Um, but have, however, prior to such transfer, uh, you have to ensure that the agent provides a written agreement. So there's a huge emphasis on, on making sure that these, we call them operator agreements in, in, in poppy terminology, are in place before we give people information. Next slide. Right, then we deal with contractual changes. <clears throat> so this will be, you need to look at your existing uh, terms and conditions of, of, of contract with your existing contractors. Uh, but for operator processes uh, relationships, there must be a contract. Uh, not because I think it's a good idea. The Act stipulates the fact that we need to have a contract. Um, Operator processor contracts must include specific information. It's also defined in the Act. So the new terms must also now be included. So any existing contracts will need to be amended. Uh, 
And this will apply to our contracts with suppliers and with customers and including our conditions of employment contract with our employees. The changes are mandatory, so we don't have an option. Uh, right, data protection requires risk and organization impact assessments. Again, this is a requirement. Uh, it's not something we we have to we have an option to think about whether we should do one. The act is very clear. You have to do one. Uh, a key process where personal data is to be processed, particularly when using new technologies. And some matters that the assessment uh, should include would be uh, systemic uh, descriptions of, of, of the processing that you're doing, the legal basis, in other words, your legitimate interest again, necessity and proportionality, the risks to the rights and freedoms of data subjects, controls to treat unacceptable risks, and where appropriate, whatever consultations are required to be held with the data subjects. Uh, a frequently asked question, are there exceptions? Yes, there are exceptions. Um, people may collect, a doctor may collect your medical information um, under extraordinary circumstances uh, to save your life. Uh, so they're going to ask you questions. They're going to be collecting whether you're allergic to certain foods, uh, whether you're a diabetic, and so on and so forth. Uh, so having recently suffered myself from COVID and, and having to receive medical care in a hospital, uh, believe me, no doctors were asking me for my consent when they were asking me these questions. And I was more than happy to give them the information as well, because obviously I needed to have my life saved. Thank you. Gary, next. So what are the consequences of non-compliance? The regulator can send you a, an enforcement notice, which basically tells you that you have to take uh, specified steps within a specified period. Um, there can be civil action by the regulator or the data subject. Um, people again are saying, "But you know, I've got I've got twenty six thousand names in my database, and 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 I don't really want to lose them." I think most people are are getting consent from their, their current customers and dealing with their current employees. Um, it's, it doesn't make any sense to, to go to 26,000 people who you've got in your database. You need to communicate to them and say, we're going to continue to send you newsletters, we're going to continue to send you product, but at the end of the day, if you want to opt out, hit the unsubscribe button. That may that may suffice for now, but to go to all 26,000 old customers and, and get their written consent, um, I, I, I'm not aware of anybody who's doing that at this point in time. Not even the banks are doing it with the, the existing customers. The consequence, unfortunately, final imprisonment. Um, the fine is, is, is heavy. It, 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 it can be up to 10 million rand. Um, it can be up to 10 years uh, or both. So, you know, I think, I think compliance is, is, a, is a far better option than taking a chance and not complying with the provisions of the, of the, of the Poppy Act. One of the, the problems that I've discovered in terms of compliance is, you know, whether you're a one-man business or, or whether you employ in a thousand people, the, the only difference between those two scenarios is the complexity. But but the compliance basics are the same for the one man business as it is for a larger business. Thank you. Next slide. So Poppy's law from the it was law already from last year when the president signed it uh, into law. We had twelve months to become compliant. Uh, we need to understand our collection and use of, of personal data very clearly. Uh, we have to look at, at, at our policies, uh, our contractual, procedural, and technical changes that may be required in order to comply, uh, the resources that will be needed to meet the required timescales, and, and, and be mindful of the penalties uh, for not protecting personal data because they're very onerous 
and and the notification to the the regulator in the event of a breach that that's mandatory. Uh, if I may, I'd just like to uh, explain. The, the regulator made an announcement recently about uh, prior authorization. Uh, this refers specifically to Section 57 and, and 58 of the Poppy Act. What she's done is she's given an extension till the end of February uh, for us to comply. What? That's not the entire act. It's just it's just the prior authorization. Now, this occurs when, for example, uh, you're processing information with unique identifiers uh, for your data subjects, or you're processing uh, information on someone's criminal behavior uh, or objectionable conduct on behalf of third parties uh, or information to do with credit reporting. But there are quite a number of provisions that you need and require uh, the information regulator's permission to process before you may do such processing. So, because that that chapter was not very really well understood, and because the platform uh, has continued to collapse, she has given an extension for for getting that permission from the regulator until the end of February next year, um, which I think is a a fair and a good thing to do. Um, the other thing is that if you've been working hard at getting your poppy framework up to date. Right now, you can't register your information officer as required. And again, that's because the, the information regulators platform has, has crashed. Uh, there, were some, there were some questions that were been asked that we had to fill in on the platform, which were contradictory. And she's assured everybody that she will uh, do a public notice when the uh, platform is back up. But in the meantime, there will be no penalties to, to any persons for not registering the information officer right now. Um, and I've explained uh, Section 57 and 58. Uh, Gabriel, I think we're just about done. Uh, right, Gary um, and uh, Errol, thank you so much. That was insightful. Um, let's bring up our second of our two polls um, uh, in light of... Um, uh, Eros conversation around um, consent from data subjects. Stephen, if you want to bring that up. So you guys should see that uh, poll question in your Teams client uh, regarding the consent of your data subjects. It was interesting to, 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 to get that um, feedback from you. So while you guys are filling that in, um, uh, and, and once you've selected your option and you click done, you, you should be able to see the presentation again. Um, I just want to cover a few questions in the couple of minutes that we've got left. Um, Errol, you've answered this question around the delay, the so-called delay of the law. Um, and I think uh, Errol's made it clear that there's certain conditions within the act that has been delayed rather than the enactment or the enforcement of the law from the 1st of July. Uh, so we've covered that question. Um, uh, there's a question here around the use of the uh, software. Um, Gary, if you just want to move forward one slide. Um, Poppy Check is available um, for purchase from our retail outlet, um, First Shop. Um, there's two versions of the product. Uh, the basic version uh, gives you everything that Gary has demonstrated to you today, uh, except for the um, the pre-created templates, the 70 templates, that is available in our pro version. It is a software as a service subscription based product with the first 12 month subscription um, being uh, mandatory. Um, and those are the annual prices for, um, for each one of the two versions of the product. Again, as a follow up uh, email to this event, we will send you a link to, um, uh, to where you can procure Poppy Check. Um, or request further information. And then uh, there's a question here uh, in the question uh, window um, from Rian. Uh, Errol, I guess this was directed at a statement that you made in terms of being compliant or not being compliant. Um, Rian makes a statement to say compliance is a journey. Uh, you are never done. I don't know if you want to comment on that. Sorry, you cut off. 
Sorry, uh, uh, Errol, the, the question there is, is that um, a compliance is a journey. It's more of a statement. It's a journey. You are, you are never done. Um, I don't know if you want to comment on yeah, that. Rian, you, yeah, Rian, Rian, you, you're correct. Um, yeah, in so many, in, in, in so many compliance matters, uh, including health and safety, uh, ISO, whatever quality management system you have in place, you're quite right. You, 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 you're never done, but the basics have to be in place. So no matter how far the journey we're going in the motor car, the fact is that before we start, we need a driver's license. So basic compliance uh, has to be in place. Uh, but you're right about your philosophy on compliance. I agree with you completely. You're never really done. Right. Thanks, Errol, for, 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 for covering that. Um, and then the last question was also asked here is what happens if I'm not compliant? Hopefully Errol has made that implication of not being compliant quite clear. Um, in conclusion, um, if there's any more questions, uh, please use the contact details that's presented on the screen to you uh, now uh, to get in touch with us, info at poppycheck.com, and we'll happily uh, cover any questions afterwards. Uh, just for interest sake, the outcome of our two polls that we ran uh, it seems like the appointment of information officers are, are more than half of you is actually complied to that requirement of the Act. Um, so that's great to see. And then the second poll that we ran, which was, have you secured valid consent from your data subjects? I think this is testament to the situation in a lot of businesses at the moment in terms of their journey towards compliance. 75% of you has indicated no. Um, so, in conclusion, I just really want to again thank Stephanie for, for hosting in the background today's webinar. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Uh, Errol, your professional opinion and experience from the market was very much appreciated, um, and I'm happy that you could join us for the second part of the session, at least. And Gary, uh, thank you so much for taking us through a demonstration of the product. Um, both gentlemen would happily cover any questions that you guys have afterwards if you can email us at info at poppycheck.com. Um, other than that, have a great day and thank you very much for attending today.